Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Erebor. Now I know this is Erebor that we're building, and as we fly through Dale, we're going to swoop into the mountain entrance and get carving again those inner halls of this brave dwarven stronghold in the Lord of the Rings universe, Middle Earth. But I'm already looking forward and setting my sights ahead towards what we could be building next. Now big projects take a lot of time, as this has proven. We're up to episode, oh, really, a really high number now, and it's taken us so long just to get this far. One of the big things we did as well was build Dale, which took us a lot longer than we anticipated. But we finally got inside the building, inside the fortress itself, we've carved these entrance halls, and now we're going to swoop in and get building the throne room. But before we do that, I wanted to come back to these large lava pillars that hold up the main hall. I switched them out to glowstone to see what it looked like. But then I tried changing them to a different brick that didn't create light, but it made the room way too dark. So I came back to the glowstone and left it at that. Now I also wanted to remove some of this lava at the bottom of the pillars. I wanted to create the illusion that these pillars reach down to the very core of the earth. So what I did was I dug away with World Edit a large pit underneath it, filled in the sides, with some dark stone brick and threw down some torches as well so you guys could see what I was doing and then I built the glowstone of the pillar all the way down to the bottom because hey what better to light the dark regions down the bottom than glowstone itself now I used black wool at the bottom of this pit and surrounded the pillar at the bottom with black wool as well to aid in the illusion that it descended into darkness then I copy and pasted the pillar again and to make it a little bit darker, I changed some of the glowstone at the bottom into black wool. And now as the camera pans down, you can see how the pillars look now. Oh yeah, and they really look like they've reached down into the depths, into the darkness below. Now with that complete, it was time to come over to the other side right across the lava canal, remove the lava, and again, recreate what we did over the other side with those pillars. And again, these are just four of the pillars. There's actually eight in this room. So I had to go over to the other four pillars around the other side of the room, and again, recreate exactly what I'd done there, removing the lava and creating the illusion that they reach down to the depths of the planet. Now you can see here at the corners, at the sides of the of the shot here, I've added a little bit of uh, lapis lazuli blocks just to give it a bit, bit of blue and a bit of colour. I might add some more here and there. Now we're going to dig out here through towards the throne room. And I started to do this with a large sphere brush, but in the end it was just not big enough. It wasn't creating enough room quick enough. So I had to create a large empty oblong, and then I filled it with a lava floor. Oh yeah, truly massive. Now this room is going to be even bigger than the entrance hall. And you can see there's some obsidian formed at the bottom of the lava lake, where some water at the side has dripped down and tainted the floor. But I swept that up, I cleared out the water, and then turned the obsidian back into lava, and then went around the edge of the room with these torches to light the whole thing up. Now again, the same as the entrance hall, we're going to put lights down first, and then come back after to remove all the torches, all the lava, well, most of the lava, and think about how we're going to do the lighting at the end. Because lighting should come at the end. You can always work with a mindset of how you're going to have the lighting in the end, but you shouldn't really bother with it until you've actually finished the project. Now, I brought the wall forward a bit with a big, thick layer of dark stone brick, and I dug through and pulled the entrance out a bit further because I wanted to be able to decline slightly from the entrance hall. So you can see here, I'm adding some quartz block stairways that come down to the lava. And then I started to build the walkways that would have the throne on, adding torches so we can see what we're doing. Now I had to check a lot of reference images because I wasn't really sure how the throne room should look. And I checked a lot of concept art from the movie the Hobbit, and arrived at something that I thought was a good mix of my own inspiration 
and the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson version. So you can see me here counting out a square so that these walkways are evenly spaced and symmetrical, adding lights and then counting again how big the square is using blue wool there. And now what I wanted to do was make the section with the actual throne much bigger. So this is going to be like a, a hallway that leads to a very much larger square empty space. And you can see me here just clear out everything and turn it into air when I create this massive space. Oh yeah, and look at that, another pitch black empty space. Now I'd marked off where I'd put the middle of the walkways. Now as you can see there, there's the evil fortress. And we're coming back inside the man-made mountain. But this is just to show you how close we're getting to actually the edge of the mountain. We've come right through and we're almost at the very tip of the mountain. So there isn't much more room to work with inside this place. So we're really kind of stretching up against our borders. Now I came around again and turned the walls again into dark stone brick. And then the roof. And then again, I repeated the symmetry that we had before with the walkways using quartz blocks to create a nice large cross. Now the throne is going to be at the very center of this cross. And it's going to be the figure piece of this room. So I came around the edge with torches again, just to light everything up again. It's really important that we can see exactly what we're doing at all times and so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Now I added a small circle section where the throne would be and put a layer of stone brick underneath the marble, underneath the quartz, because this will hold up the walkways themselves. The walkways in the concept arts and the movies that I've seen are very kind of plain, soft walkways out of what looks like a dark kind of marble. So that's what I've used here, a kind of quartz that's the closest I can get. Now the walkway is of course held up by some large stone struts. And to achieve a look similar to the movie, I wanted to use quartz mixed with stone brick. So you can see me here using a quartz core coated and edged with stone brick steps and stone brick blocks. And then I changed the core of it as well to add lapis lazuli again. I love the dark rich blue of the lapis in this texture pack. And it's a rare mineral, so I think, well, the dwarves might use that to show off. I considered diamond, but diamond looks a bit too harsh and a bit too bright. And then using stone brick steps at the sides of the pillar, and then I replaced some of the quartz blocks to hold up the pillar with quartz pillars, because hey, why not use pillars to make pillars? Makes sense, right? Then I copy and pasted the pillar three more times. And then repeated those pillars all around the room. You see me here pasting in the support struts to hold up this cross that's going to hold the throne. Now there's going to be a more ornate larger pillar underneath the throne itself right in the middle but we'll get to that later when we finally construct the throne room. Oh yeah and as we swoop in through the entrance hall and you can see again those columns of glowstone now not lava anymore the blue lapis lazuli and we swoop into the large throne room. It's looking very bare at the moment but if you can think back so was the entrance hall. Detail is something that we're going to add at a later date. What's important first is getting the room structurally how we want it. We want the pillars in the right place. We want the walkways in the right place. We need a, a strong structure, a strong base, and a strong core for us to build the detail on afterwards. And I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far. We'll probably remove the lava at the end again, just like in the first room. But I've been Shin, and this has been Let's Build Erebor, and we finally made some progress on the throne room. Hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.